The word privacy, soon to be an exhibit in the Smithsonian Institute. And as you heard last night, we were talking, books are beginning to disappear from libraries in some schools, and they're being replaced by internet cafe sorts of things. All you need is Google. You don't need books anymore. Remember the card catalogs? Nah, all gone. All you need is Google or Yahoo or any of the other search type vehicles and information databases. You can find anything you want. In fact, if you hold in your hands an iPhone or even better yet, an iPad, you literally hold in your hands all of the accessible, that which we are allowed to see, information in the known universe. That's incredible. And then some. With us tonight is Gerald Salenti, one of the world's most uh, remarkable men. His Trends Journal, of course, is available, and I hope you'll go there and get yourself a copy. It's literature. I mean, the Trends Journal is literature. It's a, each, each edition is a third of a book. Correct. And, and uh, it's yeah. 44 pages of, of, of print and, of course, art and illustrations as well, like nobody else has in the world, and, I, and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. That's true. Of what we put out. Because I know that it's not about who you're going to elect. It's about, it's about society changing. Mm-hmm. Because until society changes, nothing changes. Mm-mm. It's about the individual, not the politician. And so as long as the people don't change, then unfortunately we're going to continue to go down this road of rapid destruction and as we're speaking now, and every day, it's you know, as you said, it's an it's another crisis. Hey, how about going into Syria? I heard that little weasel, John, was his Carney, yeah. and he's saying now, check it out. They're talking about humanitarian aid for the Syrian people. And then we hear ah, that before. Kind of sounds a little Libyan to yeah, me. Just a little. It's uh, it's beyond despicable, is what it is. I I, I run out of words. Someone wrote to me yesterday that they were in a, in a market, a uh, Whole Foods market, and there were some younger people, quote younger people, early 20s, I guess, maybe college age, and they were talking about the, <laughs> the Republican presidential primary elections and who they were going to vote for and who they wanted to win the nomination. And these, these young people, there were three or four, I guess, they were actually taking this whole thing seriously and arguing in support of either Ricky Santorum or Wilbur Mittens Romney. Uh, I'm not kidding. They took. They take it. They've been hooked, folks. Well, when you think about Whole Foods, I mean, you want to talk about a corporate health food? Yeah. My God, you know it's. You know, I remember health food stores when they were real, and and there were when there were loads of them all over the place. And they weren't put they out were, of business they were mom by and pop people stores. like Whole Foods. They were mom and pop stores, family yep. stores, and they were, they were really conscientious. And they were fun to shop in. They all had their own little texture and feeling and sense. And no more. It's all no big more. time. All big time. So it, it makes perfect sense that the people that are shopping there are these out of touch people. Can, because can I, you... You know, I, I won't go into that joint. I, I, I avoid everything corporate that I can. Well, and that's smart. to me is and you know one of the big trends that we have in the Trends Journal in, into bringing things back to a a society where you could earn a comfortable middle class living is to repatriate, and repatriation means bringing it back home and beginning on the local level. And there's not a thing that I go out. I, I try not to buy anything, anything. I do, but I try not to buy anything from corporate stores. And I do all everything I can locally, and then I start moving up the chain a little bit. Mm-hmm. If you but, have to. Uh, yeah. But I want to break the chains as much as I can. For sure. It amazes me to watch this this charade of these primary elections. Now, we'll talk about Ron Paul in a minute, but but look at the incredible and profoundly over-the-top manipulation. First time in Iowa, all of a sudden, Ricky Santorum, a cadaver, is somehow reanimated and wins the Iowa, well, a few votes, whatever. He wins in Iowa. Then 
he dies. Rest in peace. And they, they reanimate that pervert Newt Gingrich. Comes out, <laughs> all right? And then they pull the plug, the life support or the death support on the Newt, and they bring back Ricky. Now, this is after, of course, they've, they've inflated and then buried Handy Herman and let Michelle drift away into the uh, ethers. This is all so phony and so obviously contrived, Gerald. It just it boggles my mind. Ricky Santorum, the most it's corrupt the, congressman of the year in 2006, wins it's three the presiden- primaries. It's the presidential reality show, and you have a front row seat. Not the truth. Wow. No, I just amaze me. All right, we'll talk about Ron Paul just a minute with the master of trends, Gerald Salendi. All right, there's a lot going on here. The sad, the sad news is that the majority of those who cast their ballots continue to vote for war, for death, for slaughter, for genocide, for big business, for the international bankster elite that finances all of these things. They vote against Ron Paul. There is no other issue in this election than war or peace. None. Zero. All the talk about all the usual crap means nothing. You either vote for war or you vote against it. I don't care what you think about Ron Paul. If you're in favor of war, you love war and death and killing, and we're going to get our comeuppance one day. If you love all that, vote against Ron Paul. If you don't like war, you vote for Ron Paul. That's the long and short of it. That's my simple-minded view.